introduce the program and maybe to finish with it too. That'd be that'd be a great idea. Yeah. start by invoking the presence of the Holy Spirit into our lives and into this online Bible study session. And we invite the Holy Spirit as you say, Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your So thank you for that. So you're all very welcome to our Evangelization Mission Ireland Bible study course on St. Mark's Gospel. And the purpose of holding a Bible study course is to enable each one of us to come closer to Jesus. And we do that by reading sacred scripture. And in fact, the scholars say we don't read scripture, that we listen to scripture. We listen to God speaking to us deep within our hearts. And to do that over the next 16 weeks, that there are 16 chapters in St. Mark's Gospel. And over the next 16 weeks, we'll do, we propose to do a chapter each week. That's the, that's the plan. And we'd like to thank Evangelization Mission Ireland for this beautiful free copy of the New American Bible that they've kindly made available to the Irish public free of charge. And you might ask, how can you get your hands on this copy? It's very simple. If you send, if you're living in the country, if you send just the six euros for a post that covers postage and, and postage and packaging you can receive this Bible in the post. So it's a great initiative, it's a great Bible. It answers, it's not only a Bible, but it also, it's the Catholic answer Bible. It holds answers to a lot of the questions we have. My name is Deacon Don Devaney, and this evening I'm joined by the Bishop of Waterford and Lismore,
Bishop Alphonsus Cullinan. And Bishop Alphonsus, for those who is a household name because he's a great man, a great man of courage and a great man to openly defend our faith. And I have a beautiful memory of him walking through the streets of Waterford carrying the Blessed Sacrament, which is exactly what's needed in this, in our country in this time. So I have great respect for him. He's a great man for also supporting and encouraging lay involvement in the mission of the church. So without any further ado, I'll hand you over to Bishop Alphonsus. John, thank you very much and, and a welcome to everyone participating now online. I just pray that, that for all of us, uh, this will be a time of enrichment and that we will get to know Jesus uh, more. As St. Jerome says, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. So just for a half an hour, let's every week, uh, Monday, half seven to, to eight. I'm glad you could join us. Let's call down the Holy Spirit's help uh, to enlighten our minds. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and they shall be created. You shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, you did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant that by the same Spirit we may be always truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Holy Mary, our hope and seat of wisdom, pray for us. Saint Mark, pray for us. So, great. Um, I, I hope you have a Bible, whatever version you use, translation you use. Uh, I have had one, the RSV, for many years, so it's... Um, uh, version of the Bible that I've got used to. So Saint Mark. Okay, so who is he? Well, we're talking about obviously a first century um, evangelist. If ever you notice the, the emblems for the four evangelists in a church, uh, Saint Mark is the winged lion. Um, he, he wrote the, the shortest gospel um, and he, he's all about discipleship. He's all about answering the question, what does it mean to follow Jesus Christ? Um, he has no infancy narrative in his gospel. He's no genealogy going over the, the, the historical account of Jesus's um, um, origin and birth. He recounts few parables, but he's got lots of miracles in his gospel. He was born at the start of the first century, maybe 5 AD, maybe born in Jerusalem. There aren't many details about his life. The details that we have are basically from scripture itself, from the New Testament, and from the Acts of the Apostles in particular. And of course, uh, his own uh, text, and he tradition has it that he died in Alexandria, perhaps in the year 68. He's also referred to uh, as John Mark sometimes. 93%, <coughs> excuse me, of what Mark wrote is found in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. So it seems as if Matthew and Luke took a lot of the information that was in St. Mark's Gospel. Where did Mark get it? Well, Mark certainly was a disciple of St. Paul and St. Peter. And he had a close relationship with St. Peter, who in one case in the Acts of the Apostles refers to him as my son Mark. And it seems, and the fathers of the church, like Jerome and Origen, attest to the, 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 the theory uh, that St. Peter told uh, St. Mark what to, what to include, what to write. 
that Peter being the eyewitness and having John Mark, who was a scholar, um, with the ability to, to, to write and to record uh, that Peter dictated, gave much of his um, first-hand experiences to Mark to write down. It is probable that he wrote the gospel in Rome where Paul and Peter were, and of course, where they died. Um, there are lots of Latinisms in Mark's gospel, uh, attesting to the, 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 the probability that it was written where Latin was spoken most in Rome itself. Discipleship. This is, this is one of the key things for Mark. What does it mean? What does it mean for you and me now to follow Jesus Christ? The, the, the very start of, of Mark's gospel, this is a line um, that in many ways, it sets the tone for the whole of Mark's gospel. And I absolutely love this line. And I hope you do too. It's very short. It's packed with meaning. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. Now, we could spend a whole day talking about that one line. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. May I tell you something? <clears throat> a personal thing for me. I, I spent three years in Rome. Um, I was supposed to be studying, but anyway, I did a bit of that. Um, but I remember one day when I was in the Irish college and one of the readers got up at mass and said a reading from the letter of St. Peter to the Romans. And I just kind of froze for a minute because there I was in Rome. And here was Peter writing to the people who had been in that city 2,000 years before. And here we have Mark <clears throat> writing a gospel in Rome. Now let's try to figure out, you've seen the film Gladiator and you have some idea of perhaps, you may have read things about Rome, you may have been in Rome, you may have been fortunate enough to have walked through, you know, the the, the forum and to see the Colosseum and all the rest of it. <clears throat> Let's try and cast our minds back to 2000 years ago, if we can. Caesar Augustus was the undisputed superpower, head of the supreme force at the time, the Roman Empire, uh, with legions and legions, with highly trained soldiers with unlimited power. Anything he wanted, he got. He was, his part of his title was God, son of God. Julius Caesar had been proclaimed a God and therefore the, the, the Caesars who came after him were given the title Son of God. When the Roman legions were victorious in the battle, a, a runner would go through the, the city and the surrounding places announcing the good news that Caesar had won. So if you like, this was an evangelizer because the good news, euangelion, good news. And now we have Mark writing to perhaps a few hundred people in Rome. And he is saying a subversive, utterly crazy, if you like, utterly courageous statement, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. So what is Mark saying? Mark is saying that the good news is not that the Romans have won another battle. The good news is that Jesus is the Christ, 
And he is the son of God, not Caesar. So to say those words, considering, you know, the, the legions walking in the streets, um, who were, of course, hostile to the faith, and from the year 64 on, the, perse the persecution of the, of the Christians began with an edict from Nero after the great fire in Rome. And that lasted up until the very start of the fourth century with the Edict of Milan, uh, 313. So Mark is a subversive. He is proclaiming to the world that Jesus is the one to follow. And so straight away, he gets into he gets into the, 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 the message of his gospel. Um, and straight away, we start with the character of John the Baptist, who is the new Elijah. And the, the words refer to in verse two there and, and three are from the Old Testament referring to Elijah. But here is the new Elijah, not Jesus, John the Baptist, who has come to announce the Christ. The Christ is on the way. So John the baptizer, chapter, sorry, excuse me, verse four, John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness. Preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And there went out to him all the country of Judea and all the people of Jerusalem. So this is very important because the Jews come to, to John the Baptist, just the Jews. But for Jesus, it will not only be the Jews that come to him, but also the Gentiles. That's us, the non-Jews. In other words, he will be savior, not only for Jews, but for the whole, the whole world. And so the ministry of Jesus begins with his baptism in the Jordan River, John's baptism. And baptism for Mark is a total commitment. You know, and for us, you know, today and these days to, in these times, to try to enter into the mystery of what it is to be baptized. It's not just a, a, an entry into the church. It's not just a, um, a family event, even though it is a beautiful family event and it is the entry into the church. It's, it is in actual fact, the beginning of a total commitment to God, of coming back to God. For the Jewish faith, uh, there was uh, a purification rite, uh, it, 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 entry into, in, into Judaism. But baptism is more than just purification. It is a definitive turning oneself over to God, allowing God to take us over completely. And we see in the baptism of John, uh, excuse me, of Jesus, the total commitment of Jesus himself to his mission. The dove, the spirit, comes down. And can I just say here, the very first line, we have the word beginning. In the beginning, does that remind you of anything? Of course, the very first line of the Old Testament. So now we have a New Testament beginning. The recreation. The creation is in, is in Genesis. Now we have the 
recreation, the, the fulfillment of the old. And we have the dove. And the dove hovered over the waters. That's in the first few lines of Genesis in the Old Testament. And here we have the dove coming down on Jesus. So you have, you have the beginning and you have the dove moving over the waters. You see, so it's, it's, not, it's not a coincidence that Mark mentions these two things together. Because Jesus has come to renew. Jesus is the new Adam. The old Adam failed, failed because of his sin. And we fail because of our sin. And we need the Savior who has come to renew us. So he wishes to make us a new creation. A new creation. And then we have, going through quickly, after his baptism, we have in verse 12, the Spirit drives him out into the desert. The desert is a place of testing. Abraham was tested in the desert. Job was tested, not in the desert, but he was tested. And of course, all of the main Old Testament characters in some way give us a clue as to the mission of Jesus. So the desert is a place of testing. The, 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 in Exodus, we see how the Jewish people wandered for 40 years in the desert. And Jesus will spend 40 days and nights in the desert to be with God, to be without distraction, to be alone with his father. And he has come to show us the way, the way. The way is very big for Mark in Mark's gospel to show us the way. You know, one of the one of the, of the texts that we often use in, in the baptismal rite is a text from Ezekiel. I will take out of your heart, I will take out of you the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will pour clean water over you and you will be cleansed. And the first words of Jesus, repent and believe. Repent and believe. He's calling us back. He's calling us back. And then, moving on quickly, he calls his first disciples. Here we go. This is, this is Mark's great message to us. Jesus is calling his disciples. And he's calling them to what? To, to, to um, teach them things by rote? No to uh, copy various things he does. He actually uses the words over and over again. Follow me. Follow me. And you know, for each one of us, you know, every day in our prayer, I, I, I think it's just so important just to sit in silence and just hear Jesus saying to you and me, Follow me. Trust me. I have something for you to do, which is for you alone. And then what do we see? What do we see in, we have the calling of the, the disciples there from 16 to 20. And then, Verse 21, Jesus goes into the synagogue why he wants to teach the people. That's why he's come. And where are they? They're in the synagogue. He goes to where the people are. But first, straight away, we see a clash, the enemy. And he meets a demoniac. He meets someone possessed by the devil. The devil who knows who he is. What have you got to do with us? I know who you are, the son of God. The devils realize who is with them, who is there. And Jesus works a miracle and casts out the devil. And then we have, he goes to Simon Peter's house. 
and cures Simon Peter's mother-in-law. Again, Mark underlining the power of Jesus because he is God. But we also see that Mark, excuse me, Peter brings Jesus to his home. And that is very important because in the ancient church, at the very start of, 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 of our Christian journey, the church was in the home. It was the domestic church. It was there that people gathered and prayed. It was only later on that specialized buildings, churches were built. The, 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 the meetings went on in people's homes. And, you know, maybe, maybe that is something that we are rediscovering because there are people who, you know, you right now are in your home, in your room. In a sense, you are making it your church and the Lord is there with you. And of course, we have these beautiful buildings where we gather, where we gather from us. But let's not forget the importance of prayer in the home. You're doing it right now in your home. So well done. Jesus goes to the home of Peter. And his mother-in-law is ill, and he takes her by the hand, raises her up, and immediately, and by the way, the word used in the ancient text for raising up his mother-in-law, Peter's mother-in-law, is resurrection. Resurrection, and we will see that, of course, at the end of the gospel. And as soon as she gets up, she begins to serve. Discipleship is about service. And Jesus himself will say later on, I did not come to be served, but to serve. And surely that's a blueprint for, for you and for me, that we serve, we try to serve. Serve Jesus in others. And Jesus, as we move through later on in chapter one, Jesus meets a leper and he sees the good in him. And by the way, leprosy existed in Ireland, of course, and we shouldn't forget that. You have, for example, up around Dublin there, you have Leopardstown. But originally, that was Leopardstown. There was an area around there where there was a pocket of uh, a leprosy colony. And uh, there are various places in Cork. Um, and and indeed in in cities around around Ireland. So, why do the lepers go to him? The lepers call out to him. If you will, you can make me clean. They know Jesus. And Mark is underlining this. The people in need. They know who Jesus is. And the devils also know who Jesus is. And Mark is putting it up to us. Do his disciples, so-called, know who he is? So may we be like those lepers begging for Jesus to, to heal us. And indeed to, to cast out anything bad within us. What we... We have to turn to him for that. So may the penny drop for us that, that we, we try to be disciples of Jesus, really knowing that he is the Christ. He is the one who gives us the good news and he is God the Son. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Bishop Fontenot, for that beautiful interpretation of Mark's Gospel of Chapter 1. And I'd like to say I'm sure if some people have questions, if you can um, 
you can type them into us on the chat um, and and we'll we'll do our best to answer them so that exactly and um is there some other way, Don and Liju, that people could write in their questions so that Don and I and whoever else is going to join us yes. can, can cover them? Yeah, we are capturing that in the YouTube um, today. Those who can have any question, you can post up there in the YouTube or over here on the chat, chat section. Um, and the next uh, week onwards, we are also opening one more media Facebook. Um, so there also we can, so everything we will be live. Zoom, YouTube, and FB. Wonderful. So That's we fantastic. Can see, everybody can ask questions if you have. And uh, we will we will try to answer in that same class or maybe in the next session before the next class starts. Wonderful. That's fantastic. fantastic. Thank you. Will we will we finish off with a prayer? Yes, Bishop. Yeah, please. That's fantastic. Great. And may I just let you know that uh, next week, uh, next Monday, I will be in Medjugorje. So hopefully I will be able to join you uh, from there. Uh, Don will be the main man next week, but I will be, I will be bringing your intentions uh, uh, over with me to, to um, because I, I can see your names here on the screen. So we just, we just thank the Lord for any, any, any inspirations that he has given us in this time of, of study of just, his word. Um, we ask that, that this word will change us because it is the power of God working through his word that he may change our hearts, that we may be more like Jesus Christ and serve him in all those with whom we live and move each day. And may the blessing of Almighty God come down upon you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you all, everybody, for joining us. And please, God, we hope you'll Join us again next week and we'll, uh, we'll move through the chapters and uh, I'll be a poor substitute for Bishop Fonzi next week, but I'll do my best. So, <laughs> And he'll be keeping a guiding eye on me from Medjugorje. So uh, that has to count for something. So thanks very much, Bishop Fonzi. And thanks to everybody for joining in on this journey that we walk together. Praise Amen. Lord. Have a great week and stay safe. God bless Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.